December 3rd, 2005. It's a cold, crisp day in Iraq. Me and my platoon of 20 warriors is coming off a mission hunting insurgents. We're dirty and tired to the point of delirium. The rest of the 70 men in our company are back at the base sleeping soundly, and we can't wait to join them. And it's a long, dusty road on the way back home. It's quiet as we pull up and park our trucks. And just as we step out, boom, 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 mortar rounds the size of footballs start falling directly where the other men are sleeping. Immediately, we rush into the trailers. Get up, get up, get up, get to the bunkers, get to the bunkers, get to the bunkers. As I'm pounding on doors, I stop and I think of my friend, Jimmy. Where's Jimmy? I rush over to Jimmy's room. I pound open the door. The air is filled with smoke. The sounds of wounded men and the smell of burning flesh, like burnt hair. That smell. It always smells the same, regardless of whether you're a man, woman, child, regardless of your race, religion, or ethnicity. It always smells the same. Dazed, I rush out and start looking for help. Just then, the medics arrive, rush into the room. It's chaos, and I can't be of any more help. So I go and I get accountability in my men. I head back to my trailer, and I try to lay down. Several hours later, I get a knock on my door. It's my section sergeant telling me what I already know, that my good friend Jimmy is dead. Dazed and in shock, I just start to laugh until I look over and see one of my soldiers with his head slumped against a Humvee steering wheel and tears running down his face. There's nothing funny when a warrior cries. Several hours later, the men that were closest to Jimmy started to gather around. We sat told stories, like when Jimmy would walk into a crowded restaurant and just yell, whammy, and everyone would laugh, you know. And then we just went back to our trailers, laid down, tried to get some sleep, woke up in the morning, went on our next mission, because that's what we do. We ignore the pain. We suck it up and drive on. Nobody ever came to check on us, ask us how we were feeling, how we were doing. There was no chaplain or therapist, psychologist, no one. Because we're warriors, we don't need that. We don't ask for help. And if you do ask for help, then that means you're broken. It means you don't want to be a warrior anymore. You want to go home. And that was my third and final tour. The military breaks you down as an individual and builds you up as part of a squad. It teaches you to adapt and overcome in some of the worst situations a human being could possibly face and never ask for help. Yet the deep scars that we carry, physically, emotionally, and psychologically, they never go away. For us, the war doesn't end once we get home. And the only way to get help is to ask for it. And this broken system has been well documented since at least the Vietnam War. In that conflict, over 58,000 American warriors lost their lives in battle. 
and another 150,000 took their own lives after returning home. Today, we lose 6,720 veterans a year to suicide. That's 560 a month, 140 a week, and 20 a day. Is it their fault? No. Because there's a stigma associated with seeking mental health care. Mental health issues are a sign of weakness in a culture that's built on strength. As a veteran, one of the hardest things I've ever had to do was ask for help because of the stigma. Who doesn't know a veteran? Perhaps your father, your grandfather, your son, your mother, your sister, your neighbor, coworker, someone. There's veterans all around us. Veterans' issues affect us all. Warriors support everyone. We need everyone's support. And there's a few things that can happen. In the military, it's essential to establish mandatory mental health checkups for every man and woman, regardless of rank. But in order to do this, we need to put a system in place. In the military, someone's in charge of everything. And no one's in charge of mental health. Someone's in charge of staples and no one's in charge of mental health. This isn't about softening up our nation's military. This is about building a fighting force of sound mind and body. So what can we do? Well, thankfully, there's over 40,000 veteran service organizations working to empower veterans and their families across the country. And they can sure use your support a lot of veteran service organizations working in this community and many others. And we can discuss the idea of stigma, the idea of mental health care, and fully reintegrate our nation's warriors and help them identify a new identity, mission, meaning, and purpose while we focus on the three pillars of health of mind, body, and spirit. In a nation that is so divided on so many issues, this is one issue where we can all stand together and say no more. But in order to do that, we have to redefine culturally what strength is. I've always been a warrior. And I always will be. And as Sergeant Rodriguez in the 101st Airborne Division, I associated strength with fierce determination and extreme violence of action, never giving up at any cost. But now, as a father, as an entrepreneur, I associate strength with being honest and open about my human vulnerabilities, my weaknesses, and learning from people with vastly different life experiences. Because this is how we end stigma. And when we end stigma, we save lives. So as we shift form from warriors in battle to warriors beyond the battle, please remember that the health of our bodies and our minds is worth fighting for, and that we are not broken. Thank you.